Cameron Chai bringing you another episode of Azo TV and today I'm speaking to Adam Gilmore from Hariba and he's going to tell us about their Aqualog system. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. This is our new Aqualog. It's a first to market uh, um, release. Basically it's a brand new system. Um, it's the first system on the market that will do a true simultaneous absorbance spectrum and fluorescence excitation emission map. It's also the first system that uses a CCD as the fluorescence emission detector. So it's 100 times faster than any other fluorescence system on the market. The light path for absorption basically is simultaneous, um, passes through the sample as it excites the fluorescence and we measure the fluorescence at 90 degrees again with the CCD for very rapid data acquisition. So it's truly simultaneous absorption and fluorescence excitation and emission. Um, I think the key aspect of it, you know, is, is easier to demonstrate here in terms of the software and the data output. Uh, the program is designed primarily around this type of instrument and, and experimental output where we have a scan of the exciting wavelength. That's the wavelength that the sample um, sees from our exciting light source. And then we have the emission spectra that is measured simultaneous with the CCD. So we end up with a three-dimensional profile of all the fluorescent species in terms of their excitation and emission spectra. At the same time, we also acquire an absorption spectrum. And the absorption spectrum basically um, is, is important for two reasons. It's important because it's measured simultaneously with the fluorescence. And so you have a kinetic match and the, the data from the same instrument is available for the processing, uh, as I'll explain here in a few seconds. Um, we, one key thing about the instrument design is that it actually scans the excitation and absorption wavelength in reverse. And this minimizes the exposure of the sample to the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So as you scan in reverse, you actually end up um, avoiding exposure to the, the UV light which can photo bleach the sample. The other reason the absorption is important is because the fluorescence um, uh, sample holder cuvette, the, the, the sample that's inside of our cuvette, can actually, the, when the exciting light passes through and the fluorescence is emitted, part of the fluorescence light can be reabsorbed and that can distort the spectrum. So we have a, a special algorithm for this instrument. It's called the reabsorption correction. And what you'll see here is the, uh, um, the, the, the button that we use to activate that tool, the reabsorption correction tool. So what that does is it corrects the fluorescence with the excitation uh, spectrum to yield a undistorted fluorescence spectrum. Uh, as you can imagine, as we mentioned before, the data collects roughly 100 times faster than anything that's on the current market today. So we give you a brief demonstration of a collection of a sample. Uh, this sample is actually a standard sample from the International Humic Substance Society. It's known as the Pony Lake Fulvic Acid Sample. And so many water quality researchers use this sample as a target to validate the, their uh, multivariate analysis of the uh, excitation emission maps once they've been corrected. So this is a picture of the data as it's being collected. So you'll notice we're scanning the excitation axis in reverse, again to minimize photo bleaching. And on this side we have the emission axis which allows us to visualize the fluorescent compounds that are in the, uh, the, the standard sample. So this intermediate display gives you an on-running view of how the instrument is performing, what is the position of all monochromators, spectrographs, and signal intensities as the data is being collected. Just one thing to point out is that previously with other scanning instruments, this particular measurement takes 20 to 30 minutes and up to two hours in some cases where samples are very dilute. And here we're able to do it in just a few seconds. So this is a raw picture of the unprocessed data. Then I'll walk you through some of the, the processing steps that we can apply. Um, one of the processing steps 
involves, of course, the inner filter effect correction. And the inner filter effect correction can be followed by uh, removal of the overlap band for the excitation and the emission. So we, we process the data. We end up with a fully corrected spectrum. Um, this being the fully corrected spectrum where we've removed the overlapping regions of the excitation and the emission um, uh, detectors and we've corrected for the inner filter reabsorption effect. So this is the true profile um, of the composition of the material. Um, this particular sample is noted for containing triptych, um, like aromatic, um, uh, aromatic um, peptide residues or trip amino acid residues like tryptophan as well as fulvic acid. So the main component that you see here is the fulvic acid component which is from the breakdown of uh, plants and, and animal materials in the uh, soil and it gets into the water stream. So, again, just as an overview, this is the first system to do true simultaneous absorption fluorescence. It's the first system that uses a CCD so it can acquire data 100 times faster. And it's the first system that employs inner filter effect correction, Rayleigh masking, and normalization to quinine sulfate standard units or Raman scattering units for a quantitative uh, analysis that allows you to do true validated interlaboratory comparisons. So with that, I'd like to uh, introduce, you know, basically invite everybody to come and see us on our website where we can answer any other further questions that you have. And thank you very much for your attention. Well, Adam, just before we finish up, what, what, what are typical applications for the Aqualog? You were saying before that it gets used for water analysis. What other things do people yeah. use it for? Well, primarily it's for analyzing dissolved organic matter, the, the compounds known as CDOM. This is a, almost anything that's dissolved in water. So this can primarily be, as I mentioned before, natural breakdown products of plants and animal materials, um, things that leach out of the soil into the water stream. So this is very important to environment. The CDOM is actually the main component in water that determines the biological and chemical oxygen demand. And also because it absorbs light, it's the main component that determines how far light penetrates into the body of water. So it has a direct role in terms of oxygen demand and light demand, which is related to photosynthesis activity. It's also used to monitor many pollutants like oil, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. It's a very important technique in the study of the Gulf oil spill. They can study how the surfactants are acting through the depth of the uh, of the water column um, and the distribution of the different uh, oil components as they break down and under the natural decomposition of the uh, oil in the sunlight and oxygen atmosphere so primarily it's environmental aspects but there's also industrial monitoring of water for many um, uh, chemical processes, you know, that mo a lot of companies expel water. Uh, but again, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a research tool primarily designed to give a, a pure qualitative and quantitative analysis of almost anything in the water uh, stream and or in a body of water. And the key thing about it is, is that it's a very specific fingerprint. It gives you both the qualitative excitation and absorption spectrum. And you can use this in a multivariate analysis technique to have very fine fingerprints of, every, of almost all components that are in the body of water. So I think along those lines, that's the, uh, the key um, value, you know, importance of this tool. It was developed under the you know, um, collaboration with researchers from NIST, the Environmental Protection Agency and the United States Geological Survey, as well as numerous independent researchers in multiple la uh, laboratories worldwide. So again, it, it was designed to fit a specific niche of generating fully corrected excitation emission matrices and absorption spectra for, for this type of, of application. All right, Adam, thanks very much for telling us about the Aqualog system. And if anybody wants more information on that, they can find that on your website. Yes, they sure can. And your web address is? Is www.horiba.com. All right, Adam, thanks very much for telling us about the Aqualog. You're welcome.